All right, buddy. Let's get you back. All right, so this is super weird. I just, I was just getting ready to take the, the peacock back to his cage. I think I'm actually, since I'm gonna run to the vet, I need to take him into the vet because I think they screwed up his arm. This doesn't look good at all. So over the past two years, we've been trying to hatch white pea chicks. Oh, Since we have gross. a standard India blue pair of pea fowl, we wanted a contrasting colored pair to go with them in the aviary. This year, we were lucky enough to have seven white pea chicks hatch out. Unfortunately, the first one died of leg injuries a few days after hatching. Then over the next couple months, the remaining six started dying one by one. Even the mama hen, a red cochin, died suddenly. And that set us on a path to get our lone remaining white peacock examined. If he had a disease, we didn't want to put him in the aviary with our other exotic birds where they might get sick and die as well. So today, we're gonna to investigate that. Does our white right. peacock have a disease that come might on, spread to other birds? All right, come here, bud. There we go. All right, bud. I'm gonna see if you got any disease. Okay, he's really strong. It's all right. All right, so we've got our peacock here and we want to get him tested because we don't want to put him with the other birds. And we've had five other peacocks go down. We had six total, but one was a leg injury. Five other died maybe by disease and one, the hen that was with them. So we're going to take him into a vet clinic. We've been trying to find vet clinics that would see a bird. And we called about six or seven in our area in Kansas City all over the place nobody would take birds and there's one that's about an hour away that'll that'll see them and try to run a test on this peacock so let's take him to the vet see what happens so we just got done with our vet checkup and all they did was draw blood but we were so grateful that they were willing to even take the bird. We called around about eight of them. Nobody within the area even wanted to see birds. They were suggesting us go to K-State, which is ultimately where the blood test is gonna be sent to. And so they're gonna, they drew blood from both wings so they'd get enough blood. They're setting it off, check for avian flu and for some other diseases that the birds could have. And so hopefully we get a positive report so we're able to put our peacock into the aviary when this is all done. There'd be about a two to three day wait to hear from the results and we'll let you know what we find out. So it's dark out now. I would want to keep, I really want to keep an eye on this, our peacock because, well, because he gave up some blood for the test that they had to draw the blood for. So he definitely needs some, some water, some fluids, but I don't have a good large cage I have some that I could put them in, but Everybody. wouldn't be able to get water and food easily for a bird this big. So right? I'm gonna put him back out here and right. I just hope he gets uh, plenty of water on his own. All right, buddy. I'm gonna get you some water here. I'm sure it was a weird day dealing with the vets and having to leave the farm. It's a little cooler tonight. Hopefully he'll, he'll still be here in the morning. Guess you. All right, well, we got some good news and, and I guess we still have questions left to be answered. So it's one week later from when we took our white peacock into the vet and they called us last night and said negative for avian flu, which is great because I don't know what would have happened. I, obviously they would have killed our white peacock to get rid of that avian flu, but they might've killed all of our birds just because they would think that they're exposed to it here on the farm. So very relieved that that's not the case, but I'm a little disappointed that they only tested for one thing. They didn't test for anything other than avian flu. And initially they told me they'd test for a couple, two, three different things. And so anyways, they said, would you like to test for anything else? And so I said, yes. So we're gonna take our white peacock back in right now and do another blood draw. And I'm gonna ask if I can show you guys what that looks like. I think that looks pretty interesting. But they said they were gonna find another uh, another university. This was through Kansas State University and they only tested for the avian flu. So they're gonna find another university that tests for other diseases. So we're gonna take him in right now. We've got our cats there, our four kittens, bear, bolt, a tiger, and then we've got wild. We had Dot was our, our special needs one and, and just as we thought might happen, uh, ended up on the road and so we've got we've got four kittens that we all took to get spayed and neutered so we're gonna go pick them up 
and then we're gonna draw some more blood for our white peacock. All right, so we're just leaving the vet clinic. I was hoping to go back with them today. We went back the other day and I didn't take any pictures or video. And so, we've got some news. Hang on a sec. Come here, Ben. So the news we got is nothing new today, but they, they took some fecal swabs where they swab near the bottom. They took some more blood. I think they may have even taken a mouth swab. I'm not sure, but they took several fecal swabs so they can check for some coccidia, more blood work to test for other things. And I think they're all working through Kansas State still. So we should hear something in the next week again, if there's any update to any type of disease or bacteria or anything that's still remaining in the peacock. Hey guys, so we have a really exciting announcement. We're moving to Scotland. No, 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 no. I said we own land in Scotland. We oh. own two square feet in Scotland. Oh, do I still get to be a lady? Yes, you are Lady Rebecca and I am Lord Jacob. So established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on a traditional Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies. Established titles plants a tree with every order and works with global charities one tree planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. Since 2020, they have planted over 2 million trees globally. The title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland with an official certificate with a crest. Check it out. I'm Lord Jacob. Hey, Bobby. And so you can officially be recognized with the title Lord or Lady on your credit cards, plane tickets, dating profiles, and it makes a great last minute gift. And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will be within a few walking minutes of our plot. And depending on how many of you want to become lords and ladies out there, we'll build our own little White House on the Hill Kingdom. Established Titles is actually running a massive Black Friday sale right now. Just use my code White House Hill for an extra 10% off. Just go to EstablishedTitles.com slash White House Hill to get your gifts and help support the channel. Is it a curtsy? I don't know. Yes, you can curtsy as a lady. <laughs> so we've had the peacock back from the vet for a couple days now and we have instructions. We need to collect some poop and so we've got, you heard me right, we've got to collect some poop. And so we have this container right here. I, I don't know how much of it. We need to get five grams of peacock poop in here so they can do some different bacterial testing. Five grams in weight. It's gonna need to be probably half of this thing. And so I tried to collect some poop from inside the peacock's coop. Okay, so we've got here, we've got this, the carrier that we took the peacock in, but one, I don't want them standing in the poop. I want it to fall down be below. And so I'm thinking if we can get this mounted up just a, a foot off the ground, something like that. I was going to build around it and then put legs on it. Okay. We can have this tray down below. I can just pull it out and then I think we'll get the, the poop pretty easily because we're not able to get it off the ground. It's it's dried to the grass and I can't tell what's new and what's old and we've tried moving it and it's just, it's very difficult to figure out when it comes to poop. All right, so it's gonna be a little awkward for a day, but this peacock can walk on this, this bar, poop down below, and then we can obtain it from there. And so we'll put some, some food and water over here. And so it's not an ideal situation. We wouldn't want our peacock living like this all the time because we hope his steps don't slip as he's trying to walk around, but we gotta do this for about a day until we collect enough poop. Got a hanging feeder right here, hanging water down here, and then poop's already starting to fall, so we'll check back in a day or two and see if we've got enough poop to go back to the bed with it. Oh, got your rooster sick? Mm -hmm. Try anything. <laughs> Here I go. 
So we've got about a half a container here full of poop and this is already super weird. I'm hoping this is enough for them to, to test with. So I'm gonna run this into the, the vet clinic. They're gonna send it off to Kansas State and then they're gonna start testing this peacock for anything and everything bacterial. Let's hope this goes well. All right, buddy, you ready to go back into your, your coop? All right, so this is super weird. I just, I was just getting ready to take the, the peacock back to his cage. I think I'm actually, since I'm gonna run to the vet, I need to take him into the vet because I think they screwed up his arm. So you can see right here, this, this arm, it, it's looking good, normal. Looks real nice. This side, oh my gosh, looks disgusting. So it's super swollen, the bone, is actually protruding out. Oh my goodness. I think they opened up the arm by drawing the blood. I think they opened up the arm and they caused an infection in here. So I'm gonna take the peacock in with me and I'm gonna see if they can give him a look. This doesn't look good at all. Well, we're still at the vet clinic. I'm a little frustrated. They told me, well, they showed me the blood draw spot and showed me where the infection was at and basically said they weren't trying to say it wasn't connected. And well, nothing has happened to our peacock. The peacock's been here and then been in a cage to collect poop for the past couple days. So it's definitely connected and they just don't seem one to, they just don't want to take responsibility for it. They had me buy some, some infection spray, spray on it a couple times a day, but we're gonna take the peacock home and Man, I don't, I don't know if he's gonna be able to fly around and it's not a huge deal since he'll be in an aviary, but they're gonna check the poop and send that off to K-State, but I feel like they caused a bigger problem. It's been a rough few days and I'm pretty disappointed in how that has turned out so far, but hopefully we get some good news or get some, get some answers when we hear back about the poop from the vet. All right, so we've got our white peacock here and the wing doesn't look any better. And just really frustrated with this situation because it's been a week since we took him into the vet with the, the fecal matter and they had no solution for this injury. And then I'm checking with Kansas State and I'm checking with the vet and they can't find the fecal matter. All they sold me was a spray I put over this, but there's not really, it's not really a, open now. To show you the difference on the wings here, so this is the, the good wing. There's no problems over here. It can fully extend. On the injured side, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on it, but basically you can't extend because we've got a bone that's sticking out here and the area that's swollen is not as bad now, but there's still, there's a bone sticking out of the wing. Like, Is this an antibacterial or something? Probably. Oh, there's some bugs coming out. Bugs? Yeah, that was happening before. Some little bugs walking around. So it's pretty disgusting without being too gross and showing you guys there's, even though we don't see like an infection, the open area around the, the bone, there's little bugs around it, little parasites, and it's just, it's really gross. It's pretty bad situation. All we wanted to do is to make sure before we put him in with other birds that he didn't have anything contagious since all the other birds he was with died so we don't want to make sure he had something that could be passed on and this whole process of finding out if he has anything it seems like he's just going to be hurt for the rest of his life and our biggest problem with this we're not trying to say that all vets are bad or that they don't know what they're doing even these vets they're they're good vets the problem we have is that people think that a vet is a, a simple solution for a bird. Most of them wouldn't even see birds or any exotic animals and there were a couple that they said to check with and they actually do see birds or exotic animals and then they told us they weren't taking any new patients. And so the vet we went to, they were open to it because one of the, the technicians, he had said he worked with uh, a, a hawk, an eagle, and maybe an owl, and then now a peacock. And so. He felt like he was capable of working with them. And then when they worked on our bird, they, they didn't seal up where they drew the blood from. And so it was an open wound. And then when we took him back in to check on the injury, they said, there's nothing we can do. Here, you can buy some spray from us and, and spray it on there. 
and that was the only solution they offered and then now to not even know where the fecal matter is that we spent a whole week collecting and it's just really frustrating and exhausting <laughs> So going forward, we're going to keep the peacock in the coop that he's in right now, separated, and we're going to wrap it up with plastic and keep him nice and warm, but we can't put him in with anybody else until we get a solution. Well, I know it's a disappointing ending and we didn't find an answer, but at least our peacock's still here with us. If we can't get answers or if we got to collect fecal again, we'll do it, but I guess sometime we'll have to put a few other chickens or birds in with him or something because we can't just risk putting him in the aviary next year, not knowing if he'll spread something to the other birds and so we may just have to do some kind of test to figure out if he has something if we if we can't find that answer